All right. Uh, we've, the talk that we've got next is quite interesting because this journey from project to product, is, it's a bigger journey. I think you just saw how to take the first steps. And what's been happening at Nationwide is that they're actually quite far along on this journey. So Kirsten Boloff is going to show us that, how they started thinking, how they started improving, uh, and how they progressed in this journey to the point where they are actually now thinking product-centric and making work and work intake be product-centric. So let's give Kirsten a hand. I'm here to talk with you about, thank you, Nationwide's journey in making work product centric. Oh my gosh, it has like a little press here. That's perfect. So I'm Kristen Bidoff. I'm a Scrum Master and Certified Agile Leader at Nationwide Insurance. And for the last four years, I've been working with Nationwide's digital assets and software delivery teams delivering work across sales, identity management, servicing, and mobile. So right now, my current focus at Nationwide is on helping multiple teams in their product-centric journeys. So today, we're going to review a little bit around the problem statement that led Nationwide on this journey, how Nationwide defines success in moving from a project-centric to a product-centric model, what our phased approach was, and how we decided to um, streamline the overall process, and what were the challenges that we encountered as we were going through this journey. So, Nationwide realized a few years back that customers were demanding more in the market, and as a company, we needed to compress the timeline in our delivery in order to remain competitive. Business and IT got together in order to discuss this problem statement, and what they realized was that they had a similar uh, pain pattern across the overall process. And so what they discussed was, we have a long linear process that has siloed interactions, multiple handoffs that take a lot of time, as well as slow communication between our IT teams. And as we move forward, we need to make sure that this unclear product ownership that we have, and at times un, uh, non-existent product ownership, is something that, that we can remedy and, and integrate into the team. And furthermore, we need to ensure that our large batch sizes that we're putting out there um, uh, we, we recognize that we have large batch sizes that we're putting out there, and so we're infrequently delivering for our customers' needs. And as a result, our customers also were realizing that there was this disjointed experience that they, were, that they had with our assets as they moved through from one channel to another. It created a lot of confusion and a lot of calls to our call center. And so clearly, Nationwide needed to make some changes across the overarching organizational structures and operating models in order to scale agile. And so these were the changes that we recognized that we needed to get to in order to meet the goal state for a product-centric model. So who here has heard of Commander's Intent before? Anybody? So Commander's Intent really defines what is success in an uncertain, dynamic, and resource-constrained world. So does this sound like your environment? It definitely is fast-paced. There are a lot of uncertainties. And so we, we, we have a limited number of resources that we have at our discretion. And so we really need to make sure that when we define su success for our teams and our companies, that we're doing so in a manner that, aren't, that, that isn't so prescriptive, that they can't adapt along the way in order to meet that goal. And so here's how Nationwide defined success in the product-centric journey. Going forward, we need to provide customer experiences in an omni-channel environment, delivering consistent, seamless, high-quality experience that allows a customer to start a journey through one channel and into another, um, while achieving increased delivery velocity. So what does that mean? Because you really need to double-click down into that to understand what are some of the changes that we need to have in order to move forward. The main piece of this was that we wanted to integrate plan and build together while introducing lean and agile concepts across that full life cycle. And in order to enable a continuous flow of delivery, we needed to define smaller batches of work and, and, and reduce that duplication of work that happened as we handed items off. And so as a result, we needed to improve collaboration and communication and start working together as one team. And as we 
really discussed this, we realized we needed to move forward with cross-functional teams. So most people talk about the IT delivery team as your scrum master, your requirements, developers, as well as your test automators. But Nationwide went a step further and said, I'm now going to say that the product owner is internal to the team, the architect is internal to the team, user experience is internal to the team, as well as that project manager. And then I'm going to orient these folks around a value stream and conduct quarterly planning with our dependencies. So this is how we wanted to move forward and define success. One of our executives famously said, if you want to deviate from any process at Nationwide, all you have to do is ensure that you have three words in your vocabulary. Experiment, innovate, empower. So what do you think we did when we wanted to deviate from Nationwide's processes? We said, hi guys, we would like to run an experiment to empower the team to innovate on a way to uh, get products to the market faster. Well, we certainly had their attention, but what we got back was, guys, in order to have an experiment, what you really need to understand is what is your hypothesis? What is your start and end for this experiment? It's not simply a hall pass in order to deviate from the overarching company processes. We need to ensure that this is something that we can scale. And so, as a result, we broke this out into three phases. The first phase was really to, to take that plan piece and introduce lean and agile principles into plan, and also to, take, uh, to orient them around minimally marketable products and what those were. And as we ran this phase of the experiment, what was realized was a 64% improvement in cycle time from discovery to DDIT start. So think about that. I'm just gonna repeat that, 64% improvement in cycle time. That was amazing. So of course this was deemed a success and we got approval to move on to our second phase of the experiment, which was now that we've introduced lean and agile concepts across plan, we're going to integrate them into the agile team. And then in addition with that, we're gonna introduce that agile team to minimally marketable products. And furthermore, now that we have a cross-functional team working together to deliver a product, we're going to orient them around a value stream and, and, and teach them about that product. And so as we went through this, we sustained that 64% uh, improvement from discovery to DDIT start. In addition to that, with the tweaks we made, we further improved cycle time by an additional 20% in DDIT from DDIT to implementation. And so from that standpoint, this was also deemed a success. So where Nationwide is at in its journey right now is actually in phase three. So we've now scaled this out to multiple teams across an entire department oriented around five different value streams. I wanna say we have seven or eight teams oriented around this now. And the multiple areas of the enterprise have come in and started to learn what we are doing and now they're defining what are their value streams in their departments so that they can orient cross-functional teams around those value streams. So there was an important piece that we realized as we did phase two of this experiment. If you wanted to be successful, there were three main areas of uplift that you had to um, spend some, some time on with your team in order to ensure that everybody was on the same page. So you've integrated plan and build together. How often does build have a sustainable business acumen around a product? So in that case, we needed to ensure that we understood what was the product that we were building and, and, and acquire that business acumen, but also who were our customer segments out there in the market in order to provide focus for the team so that they could make recommendations that made sense for the product that they were delivering. In addition to that, as you integrate plan into the IT team, they're going to be exposed to a whole host of technology. So it's a two-way street on that uplift. While the IT team is learning business acumen, the, the business team is learning about the technology. And in addition to that, the IT team is now enabled to deliver across a full stack. And so there's a whole host of technologies that support that stack. And so we need to make sure that we provide them the ability to learn and grow and develop on that full stack. And lastly, as we went through this, we, we realized that 
no one person could be a leader alone because we delivered this together as a team. And so everybody was a leader going forward. And everybody was enabled to make recommendations and push things out to production. So we did a number of things to ensure that we uh, groomed that leadership in every single team member. And so, there we go. Now that we've had this uplift for our team members, we also needed to define what success was as we brought new ideas into the team so that they understood what we were trying to deliver. And so the process that we started with always was a story map. Has anybody done story mapping before? Perfect. So this is a one to two hour meeting where the whole cross-functional team comes together and it's led by the product owner and the point of this is to collaboratively elicit the requirements for that product. So you're discussing three things when you introduce it. You're saying, what capability is the customer wanting or is there a problem statement for the user? Uh, what is the initial proposed solution? There's always an initial proposed solution. That certainly doesn't mean that that's the one that we have to go with if we find a better one during the story map. And then what benefits realization does this provide the company? Or is this more foundational that will open up benefits realization for the company? Because if we understand these three items, we can actually make better recommendations and be able to parse the packages up into uh, the right pieces to get that realized benefit. So that is the overarching purpose of getting started and making sure that the team understands what does success mean for this product that we're trying to deliver. So I've used the term minimally marketable product or MMP quite a bit as we've gone through this. How Nationwide is defining an MMP is the smallest possible feature set that addresses the user needs, creates the desired user experience, and can be marketed successfully. So as we went through and, and looked at our overarching story map, we would take a look at that and say, what is that base amount of functionality that we can initially get out there to the user so that we can start addressing their need? And then from there, how do we incrementally build upon that experience to make it better and better for them so that we reach that happy user peak and don't start sliding down that slippery slope where they can't find the functionality that they desire within our assets? So let me ask you guys, how many jelly beans do you see? Anybody? I like it. Well, what if I scatter some around the jar, change the jar? What do you think? How many jelly beans do you see? Okay, now I'm going to change the top of the jar and change the size of the jelly beans. How many jelly beans do you see now? So this was a pain point for the IT team, consistently having to estimate and re-estimate every single change that came through on a product. And this is what they felt like they were doing. So. We spoke with our business partners and our plan team, and we said, is there a way that we can get away from this? Because we are spending way more time estimating and not enough time executing on the work to get it out to the customer. And so we decided to start using relative sizing, and we do this at the MMP level. And so what we found was by estimating at the MMP level, as you can see here, I have three, by placing that relative size on there, we could get within a 10% variance from estimation to final actuals. And that absorbed all the changes that they made along the way, so we didn't have to continuously have to go back and re-estimate. It did take about a six month rolling average to get there, but once we were there, it was sustainable. An additional thing that we did to tweak throughout DDIT was the way that we break work down. So who here has seen work break in, broken down in this manner, where you have one card that builds the user interface, another card that builds the service layer, and a third card that would build the persistence layer? Anybody? I know I've seen it a ton, right? Can you deliver any one of those items on their own and have it have enough value and functionality for the user? You can't. And so this was a pet peeve of our, our team in particular. And so we thought, why can't we take vertical slices of that work, put the customer front and center so that we know that every single time we finish a card, we can uh, enable a, a continuous delivery. 
And in and, and that way, if our product owner chooses, we can release on a story card by story card basis. And furthermore, why did we have to wait until absolutely all data was in before we started building? Could we not start going with what we know today? Right? So let's pretend we have eight scenarios. If I know scenario one through four and I'm holding on five through eight, can I not get one through four through DDIT if our product owner decides that that has enough value and functionality to move forward? Right? So that's what we endeavored to do to make sure, you know, to test out does this work? And what we found was it more than works, and we then persist that requirement across the capability so that when we draw in another idea on that capability, we simply pull up those persisted requirements and tweak what has changed. So we don't have to reinvent the wheel every single time. Think about how fast you can draw up and deliver on that capability each sequential time after you've persisted the requirements. And so another item that we knew we had to do because, and, and I'm a big fan of Dominica's uh, book, Making Work Visible, is we had to make our work visible <laughs> in order to enable a continuous plan. So a strength of what we accomplished here with our VMS system was an end-to-end -end value stream visibility from product concept all the way to implementation. So a lot of folks didn't realize that at Nationwide we had short-term plan, strategic plan, and so they had no idea what happened there. And we found a way to visualize in our team space what they were working on so that they could see how the work items progressed all the way from that concept into our team space and out to implementation. And along with that, on our VMS system, we ensured that we had clear priorities that were updated regularly by our product owner. If anybody came up and looked at our story maps, they would clearly see where our dependencies were because they were marked on there. WIP limits were set right up front into the discovery phase in order to show an even distribution of work across the overall stream. There were clear time box goals without IPMs. Who here has sat through very long, arduous IPMs? So what we found was you could do a little bit of planning every single day and still get the work done and create a pool system that actually accelerated your overarching velocity. And the last thing that we were very proud of was we were able to get continuous improvement into every single iteration so that we could um, you know, basically chip away at that technical debt a little bit along the way so we didn't have to stop all work and, and, and do only that. So while DDIT is only between 2 and 13%, depending on the team that you measure, of the overarching time frame from start to implementation at Nationwide, we still decided that there was one further tweak that we could make in DDIT, and that was leveraging ATDD, or Acceptance Test Driven Development. Now, we were very, very specific in why we wanted to leverage this it definitely made sure that there was a high amount of collaboration between the team members and the product owner to have a common understanding of what was wanted for the customer. And so think about this. Our product owner has said, here is what success is for the team. Here is the product that the customer wants. And then there's another check again as we've persisted those requirements. And then there is a third check of is this really what you want us to accomplish for the customer? So by the time that we've gotten it out there to done, that is 100% what the product owner is wanting. We, we never run into the situation anymore where the product owner says, that's really not going to work. And then in addition, how we enabled getting continuous improvement or chipping away at products, uh, excuse me, problems, um, was by the use of improvement katas. So has anybody used improvement katas before? I love them. But basically what an improvement kata is, I guess the foundation of it is, it's better to practice five minutes every single day than to practice three hours one day of that week. And so you need to make sure that you have a robust problem statement that you orient your team around. And from there, have your team define awesome, right? What is, what is that, that happy place that they want to get to? And then from there, what are the first steps to start on this journey? And then you want to time box a set of tasks 
in order to provide that accountability and responsibility for the team to actually chip away and get that done. And you can do this alongside your work as well and not have to kind of stop all feature work together um, if, if you practice this appropriately. And so as we did this, we needed to make sure that we had a continuous delivery tooling understanding, right? Our, our team members know that we have this out there. What is that definition? What are we working toward for our assets? And so here you can see the Jenkins CI pipeline that Nationwide um, has defined for our go forward. And then in addition, you can see our automated release flow here all the way from clarity back out to production where we monitor and have feedback sent through business and come back through clarity. So everything was not perfect when we went through this. There were a number of challenges that we ran into when we were making this transition. And so one of the items that we realized was as we moved to these two pizza teams, we needed to make sure that there was a, a, a bit of cross-training across every single team member. So regardless of what was going on, any team member could pick up the work and keep it moving across the whole life cycle. And then furthermore, as additional areas are buying into the product-centric journey, they're, they're taking a look at what they are doing in their departments and trying to define what are our value streams, right? And so I think Carmen had said, you know, gosh, if you don't know who your customer is, if you don't know what business purpose that, that your area is serving, you know, that, that could be a, a larger problem in and of itself. So they are seriously being thoughtful about that and making sure that they're orienting around the correct value streams. Another thing that happened was, you know, previously we did not have plan integrated into the team space. Um, we call that the discovery phase. And so teams were really uncertain about, gosh, how do I um, you know, actually accomplish being able to have time to get up there and work on discovery? Um, and so what we found through setting WIP limits, you could actually even the flow of work through the overarching process and uh, enable the team to get that accelerated delivery. And furthermore, when we went omni-channel, meaning delivering across web, mobile, voice, we realized that there was a lot of hardware stuff that we had to take care of, right? So mobile, if you're doing mobile, you need to have a Mac. But there were certain assets where the technology required a PC. And so then you have your developers having two laptops. And, how do we eventually consolidate this? And, and where, where do we need to have two laptops per developer versus one laptop? And how do we appropriately tool the team, right? That came up. There were a number of discussions on what test strategies Nationwide wanted to orient around in order to start having a thoughtful conversation about the test frameworks that we have at Nationwide. I don't know if this has ever been discussed before, but Nationwide, it seems, has a, a framework for every asset. It, <laughs> is, that, is that fair, Carmen? <laughs> and so we're really trying to be thoughtful about how do we consolidate this and narrow this down and orient this around the same test strategy going forward. Um, in addition to that, as we're moving from project-centric to product-centric, we need to be thoughtful regarding how do we move forward and orient our portfolio for work coming into the lines and ensuring that there isn't anything that gets dropped. Um, so we are still working through that one, so feel free to discuss that with me further if you guys have had this, uh, successes in there. Um, but as we are doing all of this change, what we realized was that roles are evolving. Um, as roles evolve, what, what, is, what is actually being realized is that the interaction models are changing. Um, so we need to make sure that folks really realize, how is my role changing? How is my role evolving? And then how are the other roles changing and evolving? And what does that interaction model look like moving forward? 
Um, I think that we have a pretty good handle on this at this time. This is something that we would consider as solved at Nationwide. But then the next two, we have not solved yet. But intersourcing, as Carmen said earlier, is really to enable the team to deliver on that full stack. And so if we can appropriately draw in intersourcing, this is a huge, huge uh, helper in reducing your dependencies and, and getting that more independent team to deliver on that overarching stack. And then lastly, this is the one that, that's a personal favorite of mine. How do we move from an annual funding cycle to an adaptive funding cycle? So when we can solve that and get uh, more frequent feedback loops into our funding model to divert the funding to the products that mean the most to the customer and stop planning on an annual cycle where the market changes but we're still delivering that product even though the market no longer supports it because that's what we got funding for, that is going to be a huge win. And so all of these items were challenges, but I would like to remind everybody that if it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. And as customers are demanding more and more out there, companies have to change to keep up with the market. So thank you again for your time today. Please reach out if you have any questions. I really appreciate your time.